Hello, my great and wonderful people. How on a day today? I hope all of on a day well. Today, we get a lot of videos again. When we want to quickly review to you concerning the things when we say if they happen right now for inside this country, Nigeria. Just as you rightly they see one for scream, this one a PVC. When we say Nigerians, they go to INEC office day by day ever since to collect. Now, in the discover so more than a million PVC. When we see the dump. For Kana. I will leave you to watch the video yourself and hear everything when it be say the review here. This one happened for Newi, the southeastern region of Nigeria. And they know this one might be the region when it be say yes, it hold the power of Peter Obi to win this election. All right, to talk less, I will leave you me first of all hear everything from this video. I'll come back for more. <laughs> Love is more thing, people of God, don't know. This authority FM, uh, the premises. One house, I don't go pay plenty PBC when the door for a side, uh, a car meeting, car and come authority FM premises. I see people, all the plenty PBC when they for a year, where it pass, if you don't reach one million, no, belong to Navy not. The ones who don't check, now Navy not people, now I get this PBC. Maybe for tell everybody when it's a being, your friend. I'm all right, I believe say, when I don't see him. This one are the PVCs. When we say Nigerians, they go day by day to INEC offices. And over time, we don't bring a lot of reports. How it be say Nigerians, they, they go day by day to INEC offices to make sure say, they collect all these PVCs. To give to Nigerians to vote, they rather go dump them for Kana. You just see them. See what they happen for Nigeria. See the Magumago and why you want to say they want to win election. So that the people, when they're ready to vote for Peter Obi, most especially for the southeastern region of this country, they don't go amount to anything. You don't see her now. All right. I'll equally take you to another video when they we receive. This one consigned the Tenebu, waiting if they presently they share to Nigerians now to buy their own content. Watch this one first, and after this one, we we'll get another video. We want to review. See what the FPC give us. So, then just come in and the same time bring my bottle card. Then give me one shirt, one key order, oil, pepper, and uh, sardine, sardine shirt. Maggi, ten pieces inside. One sugar, one salt, one gari, one gari of gari, one gari of uh, rice, one gari of this, a rubber for hand. Okay, guys, I'm not going to do it again. And this one, this one, uh, empty cell, not in the inside. See what they give us. See what they tell you for this country. So before they give you this, you know, what did they ask you? They just ask me for my brother's card. I give them the right, what they were right. They give me the blank card, this one give me. So now they say this one now, now, now for, the, for the next uh, four years now, they don't say to you be that now. No, that is certainly not be that now. Now they say to me be this. So okay. this one now, how many days you go to Japan now? This one now, one day now. This is not going to be moving again, they say. And now we say, with this one now, you go go vote APC now. Me, I don't go vote APC. Why now? Why they don't give you this? I don't go, I don't go, but I go just for the defense, give me a call, but I don't go for APC. What do you do for this? All right, my great and wonderful people. I believe say, all of you now don't see that video. Now, the message when we want to quickly pass across for things like this, you know, every one of us already talks, say, if they give you something, take, but vote the right person, right? But for the process of this interview, for the person who will be said they ask this person when he received these items from APC agents, here waiting he talk. He said they collect his own voter's card after he be said they don't give him all this item and they write something. Which is to say now the number of his own PVC now in they don't collect so. Right? He say he will go vote another party, which is he no will vote for APC. Whereas they don't already collect his own number. Of your own voter's card, which is PVC. Tell me, people when they say that they write all those numbers, they don't know what they do. 
they don't know what they plan to use all those things when they say that they write for your PVC to, to do. Wait, say, why would they move ourselves? Somebody give you something like this when they say not even worth up to 100 naira. You give them your own PVC where you know say na it be your rights. Then tomorrow you will say you want to go vote for another person. They never manipulate you. They don't manipulate you with that because of two idomi. One dirty car of rice, one dirty car of beans, one dirty car of uh, gari. I'll be waiting, waiting again. Maggie, na in, you want to say your conscience for. Nigerians, at least, we're supposed to be wiser more than this. Yes, yes. Wait till it take you to say, no, I don't need them. Take them, I don't need them. Leave my PVC for me. Wait till it take you. I will take them, I not go vote for them. Who you the fool? Me? <laughs> All right. After this, we equally get this other video when they will receive from this man of God, the pastor of Dunamis Church, when they say in name now, Pastor Paul and Nature. Ever since this man day for this series of Food for Thoughts, yes, he don't do part one, part two, part three, part four, and now he don't still release part five concerning this same election of next tomorrow. I want make una take una time, although this video long, a little bit, about nine minutes. Take your time to digest this video. We get reason why basically with the bring video like this, a time like this. We'll come back. Food for thought, part five. There are people wondering why the church or church leaders should be bothered about governance or politics. That is very absurd, very ridiculous. It is as ridiculous as asking why a person should be interested in the sanity of the pilot that is to fly him in an aircraft. Or why a person should be concerned about the expertise of the surgeon that is to perform a major operation on him. Or why a person should be worried about the health and hygienic status of the caterer that serves him food. Please understand this. Anyone who is not concerned about those things that concern his existence is a concern himself. The silence of good people is more wicked than the actions of bad people. Evil thrives when good people are silent and most times silence is taken to mean consent. No one is permitted to keep silent when their destiny is being decided. You don't keep quiet or silent when your destiny or your welfare is being decided. To keep quiet when your destiny is being decided, like in a political setting, is to end with an outcome that may not be desirable. Now, why should the church, church people, church leaders, and the society at large be interested in politics and governance? Why should we be interested in who heads the government? First, government make policies and, pol and policies affect the society and the church is part and parcel of society. So everyone in society, the church and her members inclusive are at the receiving end of government policies. Second, government's failure places a high burden of care on the church as a religious and charity institution. For example, when people can pay their children's school fees, house rent, etc., it is not the government they go to for help. It is the church they come to. When a person's loved ones get kidnapped, the church most times is their first point of call for prayer and emotional support. And someone says the church should not be interested. Government's inability, incapacity, and irresponsibility leading to insecurity of lives and properties of the citizens places a high burden of responsibility on the, on the society at large, the church inclusive. Government's policies and actions, listen to this, that forbid religious freedom and facilitate religious persecution and intolerance, especially against Christians and the church, pose very great existential threat 
to the church. They are against the very life of the church. Aimed at reducing or positive, possibly eliminating the Christian population in Nigeria. And somebody said we shouldn't be interested. Many have rapidly forgotten what happened in 2015. There was the presidential candidate of the coalition with a track record that didn't appear favorable. His speeches and actions before then were contrary to religious freedom. Many were warned of what was coming, but it fell on deaf ears. The youth then campaigned, including civil societies and others. They claimed that insecurity would be handled, corruption would be handled, etc. What was the outcome? Escalation of religious intolerance and the persecution of the church went to another level. According to Stefano's foundation, headquartered in Jos, between 2016 and 2021, over 5,878 people, mainly Christians, in Christian territories were killed by terrorists in terrorist attacks. Between 2016 and 2021, over 10,715 people, mainly Christians in Christian territories again, were killed by hesmen as against 3,000 and 41 killed between 2010 and 2015. See the difference. Between 2016 and 2022, there were 11,362 recorded cases of kidnapped persons across the country. Many more are beyond record. This is against minimal, insignificant record of kidnapping before that time. Today, some people say church should not be bothered. When out of the three frontline presidential candidates, Two of them are likely to further anti-church, anti-Christian, and in fact, anti-society agenda. One of the candidates is of the same ethnicity, religion, and region as the current leader under whose watch the nation has experienced such level of unbelievable insecurity, mostly against the church and generally against all. The repetition of the same disaster is not hard to imagine. Especially as this same candidate has not condemned any killing once by his people. He has not condemned it once. He has not visited anywhere once to condone with any people. He steps into power. He continues from where it has stopped. The second candidate chose a Muslim vice president. Being a Muslim is himself. Despising, disregarding the plight and the value of the church in Nigeria. The third candidate. The third one remains the only sensible, only credible way to go. Not just for the good of any region or religion, but for the good of the nation as a whole. So for anyone to say that church should not be involved in governance and politics of the nation, he is either daft, deceived, dubious and fraudulent, demented that is insane, or a demonic agent from hell who want the destruction of the church? Friend, you have been shown the way. Did you see the way? You have been shown the way. Follow the way. Go out and vote. Do all you can to ensure that your vote counts. God bless Nigeria. Stand up on your feet. Somebody may say, but the one, no, you can, you can go ahead. The one that is of the same religion and region and ethnicity as the current leader of the nation has a Christian gentleman vice presidential candidate. Somebody may say that. Don't forget that that was our situation in 2015. There was the Christian gentleman pastor of a, a, in a denomination. Many people voted in that time because of the vice president from the region where he has come from we came from they voted the denomination the, 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 the christianity voted pentecostal cycles voted and his denomination voted with the hope that he is there and this, that means that there is hope question what difference has been made Brutal question. How, to what extent did he, was he able to stop insecurity? To stop the massive killings, the massive persecutions, and the massive, uh, uh, massive anti-religious agenda against Christianity? 
What was, what extent? But I want you to notice that every time they gave him the opportunity to act as acting president, things rapidly changed. Things rapidly changed. But to what extent was he given that opportunity? So don't let anybody deceive you. That uh, uh, so let us vote because of this and that and that. Let nobody deceive you. Open your eyes. We shall not let history repeat in our nation. We shall not let history repeat in Nigeria. Wasn't that vice president, the current one, wasn't he good enough to come out as presidential candidate? Why was he denied? Why didn't it happen? Because a demonic agenda must still continue. Which is being frustrated right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because they, 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 they deceive, people deceive themselves and we deceive ourselves a lot. All you need to do to face the future is to think about the past. What has happened before, it gives, it gives an idea of what is likely to happen before. Don't let anybody deceive you. The frontline people, the arrowheads, are the people to consider right now in terms of who gets up there. I believe you have heard. Help me tell people, have you heard? All right, my great and wonderful people. I believe say you don't listen to the message from the beginning to the end. Shame men of God talk for this year. Men of God, they cry their lives for this year election. Yes. At the end, may nobody condemn any man of God. Say, when I not see prophecy. After election, now a lot of prophecy would they call God. Say, God, say, a lot of men of God, almost all of them stand up. To direct their own members and every Nigerians. If we see missing, then not blame God, not blame man, not blame anybody, rather blame yourself. Now, so talk Anish concerning this matter, we'll leave you to share your opinion with us at the comment section, even as we draw the line here. We'll see you again when we see you. Remember, we love you all. Bye bye.